Thank you for tuning in to the Bethel Temple Faith Church broadcast. We appreciate your viewership and are confident that there's a word from the Lord for you. Now with today's message, our pastor and founder, Pastor Bertram Hinton Jr. Amen. Amen. So we are um, just excited about the goodness of the Lord tonight. Yes. Um, as I was going through uh, processes connected to preparation, uh, honestly, my mind uh, <laughs> was all over the place today relative to that which I would share. Um, this listening brush shell for God and trying to identify uh, the where he would have us to be for tonight. Uh, as I say often, you know, my, my prayer in preparation whether it be for Sunday or Wednesday or whenever, uh, my prayer is that God would give me uh, a word that is connected to our now and our future. Yes, um, doesn't do a whole lot of good to teach on the past, um, but we're looking for what God is saying for today and what he's saying for tomorrow. Uh, and so as I was able to um, kind of lasso my thoughts and bring them to corral them together, God finally settled me in the book of Judges to like, and uh, I want to give emphasis to the fourth chapter uh, of that book, uh, reading verses um, 4 through 24. Uh, I think it's necessary just for the sake of hearing the story that I read those verses. Uh, Sky, we're not going to talk over me tonight. God bless you. Amen. Um, it's necessary for me to read over those verses so that we're capable of hearing the fullness of the story, be able to put ourselves in what God is saying and why he chose this for this evening. So Judges chapter 4, uh, I'm going to start at verse number 4. If you have Judges 4, <laughs> would you acknowledge by saying amen? Amen. 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 Lord, Lord, reads on this wise, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth. She judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Have not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulon. And I will draw unto thee the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, and his chariots, and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. God is giving instruction. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh. And he went up with 10,000 men at his feet. And Deborah went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the brother-in-law, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent into the plain at Zaanaim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed to Sarah that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harosheth of the Gentiles into the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord have delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and his chariots and his, all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak. So Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts unto Herosheth of the Gentiles. And all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword and there was not a man left. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. 
For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Verse 20, again, he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here that thou shalt say no? He wanted to lie for him. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. And behold, Barak pursued Sisera. Jael came out to meet him, and she said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, Behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. 24 is at the end where we stop. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, the king of Canaan. You know, the Old Testament is filled with so many great stories uh, that, that if we don't really take time to read and grab understanding out of, we, we'll hear things and, and, and not get it. But tonight we're going to grasp real understanding. Wow. I want to teach tonight using this thought, methodical obedience. Methodical obedience is what I want to teach on tonight, methodical obedience. I think it's interesting, uh, to say the least, um, to kind of take note at where and what our last few lessons have been connected to uh, our Bible studies. Just on last week, uh, God influenced us and instructed us uh, with a lesson entitled Attention to Detail. Uh, and tonight he speaks to us about methodical obedience. Uh, I understand that the, the, the hour, the time, I don't even like using the season because people have kind of killed that word, but uh, the moments that we're living in uh, currently are going to require our methodical obedience to the voice of the Lord. That, that God will, in fact, give us specific instruction. He will give us, at times, direct guidance. He will give us, at times, uh, measures of play-by-play. -play. But his intention in so doing is that we are obedient to that which he's commanded. Mm -hmm. The word method, the word method uh, is defined as a way of doing anything. Okay, method, a way of of doing anything. We know method to simply be the base word of methodical. Method, again, a way of doing anything is also a process. A way of doing thing, of doing anything or a process. Uh, another de definition for the word method is a system in doing things or handling ideas. Method is a system of doing or system in doing things or handling ideas. All right. So if that is the definition for method, uh, methodical simply just being a derivative of that word. Methodical simply is that which is done according to a systematic or established form of procedure. Methodical done that which is done according to a systematic or established form of procedure. So tonight, uh, Connected to our text out of Judges, the fourth chapter, we're going to talk about methodical obedience. As the chapter starts, we identify, this is just a good piece of nugget uh, knowledge for us to have. The way the Bible is constructed, okay, when we get to the book of Judges, uh, Judges literally speaks of a time uh, where the children of Israel, having now made conquest of the promised land uh, in the book of Joshua, which is the book that directly precedes Judges, they're living in the promised land, um, but they don't have uh, a king or an established leader. So what God would do is he would allow them to kind of live. They would do their thing. Uh, in the midst of doing their thing, they normally would turn their back on God. They would fall prey to the workings of the land and the nation. And God would, in fact, allow them to be captivated by that nation. And they, they become servants of those people. They would serve for a number of years, be under bondage and captivity. They would cry out to the Lord, and God would raise up a leader. And that leader would serve as a judge, 
for a period of time in the life of the children of Israel. And as long as that judge was alive, the children of Israel would be obedient to Tiana. They would do that which was right. But when the judge died, they would go back to their old ways. This was their, this was their MO. Uh, they got a good pastor. Uh, as long as that pastor was alive, everybody lived for Jesus. The moment the pastor died, they turned their back on him. And they would be 20, 15, 10 years. They would live how they wanted to live, didn't get an epiphany. Ooh, this ain't how I was taught some years ago. Oh, God, I need you. I'm crying. I don't want to go through this no more. And God would say, okay, I'll raise up another judge. Mm -hmm. And so now uh, we're facing the third instance. There has been the first judge by the name of Othaniel. His story is in Judges chapter 1, uh, where he being the brother connected to the lineage of Caleb, he served as a judge. When he was judging, everybody fell in love with God all over again, served God. When Othaniel died, they turned their back on God. Okay? They cried out, oh God, we're so sorry, we didn't mean to do what we did. Oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Then God raised up another major judge by the name of Ehud. Ehud was left-handed, minister black, he did his thing, he served the people of God, he led them. When in fact he died, they went back to their old ways. Then these are little minor judges that came up, Shamgar, different people like that. But the third set of, of true major judges now shows up in that this woman by the name of Deborah, where we started our story tonight, is now serving as the judge in Israel. Okay? Uh, they have been now for almost 20 years under the captivity of uh, the land of Canaan, all right? Uh, this King Jabin, who was a Canaanite king, now has authority over them. He's ruling over them. He's taxing them. He's charging them a lot of money to be citizens of his town. He's putting workload on them. They cry out to God, Mama Barbara. They say, Lord, we can't take this no more. We need a deliverer. Jesus, God, we sorry for all our sins. And God sends Deborah to be the next judge. Now, when we're talking like, about methodical obedience, the first point I want to give us is uh, in order for us to obey God according to his methods, there must be an establishment of order. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, order is, is, is not a curse word by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it is not a word that is for our negative or our uh, detriment. But order is a word where we find safety. Yes. That's right. We identify that in order for me to obey, have methodical obedience, there has to be an establishment of order. And the order has to be seen in the source that's giving the instruction. That's good. When we look at where we started tonight, Judges 4, verse 4, it's loaded with order. The scripture says, And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. Well, just looking at that particular verse, through a theological or theological aspect, I see three areas of order in verse four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first area of order I see is that she is a prophetess. Mm -hmm. All right. Her being a prophetess, uh, for those of us that have been the first principles, mm -hmm. thank God for you. Amen. You're just coming off last week, Minister Black teaching you about prophecy in the church. So when we see the word prophetess, we don't think that a strange word. We understand that that is simply a messenger from the Lord. Mm -hmm. One that has been chosen to give us what thus saith the Lord. With the test being on the back, we identify <laughs> that this is simply the female form of a prophet. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, that's great. You told me you saw three points of order. The first point was that she's a prophet. The, sex point, the second point was that she's a wife. Okay, this is where it gets a little hairy. All right, so, so uh, while, while, while Pastor is not saying that... Um, uh, uh, a prophet is, has to be married. He, he's not saying that. But what pastor is saying mm -hmm. is that a prophetess, a woman, must be under the authority of a man. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. Thank you, Moss. The reality is this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Lipscomb, b before I ever say anything, uh, I, I don't say it just based on the knowledge that I have over the years of being saved. I actually researched that, which <laughs> I'm getting ready to say. Okay, so every instance of the word prophetess in the Bible, is either connected with the wife of, the sister of, or uh, the, the, the wife of, the sister of, or that being married to the prophet. Okay. Every instance. Uh, okay. Uh, now, now, okay. So, so, so I, I'll just do this for free. So, so, so uh, in, in Isaiah 8, the third verse, 8 chapter, third verse, uh, 
Isaiah doesn't even name his wife. She's just called the prophetess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she only need a name. Uh, she, she's just an extension of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, and, 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 and when you look at um, Nehemiah, okay, uh, the, the sixth chapter and the 14th verse, uh, even the false prophetess was connected to a male covering being Tobiah and Sanballat. Wow. Go, go and do the research when you get a chance. Uh, even she had to stand under the covering of a man. Well, Pastor, that sounds a little chauvinistic. No, that sounds all God. Mm. It's order. It's order. Uh, because everything God created originated from a man. Yes, sir. That means whatever God is in has to be covered by what he created. Mm. Uh, the, the, the woman came into existence connected to what he had already created. Yes, sir. She, she was able to be because God had already done. Mm. And so when I identify that everybody, this 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 is gonna be good, and I want y'all to repeat this out of me. Say everybody, everybody needs a man. Needs a man. Oh God, I love it. Oh God, I'm getting excited already. Everybody needs a man. That's good. Oh God, from the side, I feel the Holy Ghost right there, flat. I'm trying to maintain my posture tonight. Okay, uh, this is what happened. I spent real good time with the Lord. Okay, so 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 I began to identify that the only the only way the anointing could have flowed through the prophetess Deborah's mouth was that there was a man named Lapidoth in it. Good. Catch this, Black. No other place in the Bible is he mentioned. Yeah, that's good. Yes, sir. Let me go a step further. He probably don't even go to church. Mm. Oh, <laughs> next level. Help me tonight, Jesus. But she was able to be anointed as a prophetess mm -hmm. because she had a husband. That's right. <laughs> Bible ain't say he was out slaying no giants. Bible ain't say he was fasting and praying. Mm -hmm. Bible ain't say he was even living right. The Bible say he was there. Mm. Yeah. And because she was the wife of, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. there was an anointing that God could use her in, even though he was probably janky. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next level. Everybody needs a man. Oh God. Okay. All right. So 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 methodical obedience. So so we identify, Amen. That that she's not only uh, a prophetess, the voice of God. Not only is she a wife, but the third thing I see is that she was the leader or the judge. And so because of the authority and the order that was in her life, she was now eligible to speak a word in the life of somebody under her. Because she was living in order. Mm -hmm. This is why, uh, and, and, and people laugh sometimes when I say it, and I think they think I'm being funny. But this is why I constantly say, pray for your pastor. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is this, your prayers for me help my prayers for you be answered. That's right. Wow. wow. That's good. wow. The, the fact yeah. that, that I'm remaining in order mm -hmm. from your prayers mm. allows what God speaks through me. To come to pass for you. Mm. Yes, okay. yeah. so, 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 so the order can flow when I lift up the one that's covering me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Covers never designed to be under you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. It does no good under you. It's, it's designed to be over you. Yeah. Even if you are a wild sleeper. Uh, everybody starts out under the covers. Mm -hmm. they, they might not end up under the cover, but, but they started under the cover because they realized the purpose. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is that even when it makes me hot, yes, sir. Yeah. it's still supposed to protect me. Security. That's right. That was good. That's yeah. good. That's you good. catch that one on your way home. <laughs> yes, yeah. Let me let you catch it now. Even when pastor makes you hot, mm -hmm. Go ahead, preacher. It's still for, it's still for your protection. <laughs> so, 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 oh God. So, 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 if we're going to have methodical obedience, we got to first make sure we under the appropriate order. Uh, and, and doing you no good to go to nobody's church if the pastor's janky. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't doing you no good. You, you can check off all the boxes you want to check off about being in a church. But if his life or her life is not ordered appropriate, mm -hmm. it's impossible for you to obey God. Wow. Think about that one. And let that, just smoke that in your spiritual pipe for a season. You can't really obey God 
unless you're in an orderly home. I can't even get what God has for me if my man is janky. Mm, 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 mm. I'm doing the best I can, Mama. That's why, by the grace of God, you ought to thank God every day for your past. Yes. Oh, yes. God from Zion. Thank you, Father. Help me tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Okay, let me, let me, let me keep moving. Because if some of us had to just depend on our man, oh, I'll leave it right there. All right. All right. Go ahead. So, <laughs> doing the best I can tonight, Stu. So, so, we identify. That, that she's in order. She, and because she's orderly, uh, God's wisdom can now flow through her. All right? Um, here's the thing I want you to catch about order. Order not just, it's not only that which we need to keep us safe, but order is synonymous with God's agreement. Okay? Uh, when you're looking for an answer, you're, you're searching. I, I've got a prayer request that I need to hear what heaven is saying. Well, when I submit that prayer request in an orderly or to an orderly source, mm. there is then a heavenly agreement that comes to my life. That whereas, and this is where it's going to get real difficult tonight, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, whereas, when I fully understand that my order is in order, mm. I won't question what my orders are. Mm. Mm. My orders. Yes, sir. That's good. When I know my order is in order, mm -hmm. I won't question what my orders are. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. I won't That's be it. asking 30,000 times, did you really mean for me to apply to this place? Mm. Mm. Were you literally saying you wanted me to buy this car? Mm -hmm. Did you really mean I wasn't supposed to date this guy? Mm -hmm. That's right. Those questions wouldn't even show up. Yeah. Because when I understand that my order is in order, yeah. I don't have no reason to question my orders. Mm -hmm. They even train folks in the military mm. that when folks are wearing certain bars and they tell you to do certain things, your answer is simply yes, sir. Mm. They, they don't say, well, corporal, uh, I feel as though, uh, uh, you know, captain, I was thinking that. None of that. All they do is hear the command and yes, sir. Mm. Mm. They get real good. They don't even say yes, sir no more. They just do. Mm. So, so the woman of God that's in order, I, I've got a male covering, so I'm good. Even if he's janky, it don't matter because I'm submitted to him as my head. God help me tonight. Uh, and because I'm submitted to him at my head, as my head, I don't care that every man in Israel is following me. I just want to make sure I keep following my man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care that I've got you know, people under my authority that if I say anything to one of these men as a woman, Deborah, when I tell them to go do a thing, I don't care the fact, it doesn't impress me with the fact that they do it without question. What I'm making sure I'm doing is staying under my head. Yes, that's good. So I can lead 50,000 men as a woman as long as I'm submitted to the one over me. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. This is why God helped me tonight. This, this is why, you know, it's great. You know, I thank God. I'm going to use Dr. Cooper for example. So I thank God for somebody on the level of a Dr. Cooper, okay? Mm -hmm. She goes into the office. It is just all kind of people that's just uh, waiting for her instruction and, and whatever the doctor says and what the doctor says, male or female, matters not. But when she comes home, she realizes, Dr. Cooper, I still am, but I'm Mrs. Dr. Cooper. Oh, yeah. All right. I, 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 I might be Dr. Cooper, but I'm the wife of Brian. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm capable of being Dr. Cooper mm -hmm. because I'm the wife of Brian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Okay, all right. Uh, Cooper's good to come to church, ain't it, man? You get all kind of good stuff. <laughs> hey, so, so the reality is, Deborah, who's in authority, uh, she then sins for this man by the name of Barack. Mm -hmm. Now, I love Barack to a degree, but Barack's a little janky. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Barack, he hears Deborah calling him. Uh, he knows she's in order because she's the wife of. Uh, he knows she's in order because she's the prophetess. He, he knows she's in order because she's the judge. But, but Barack, you know, he, he's still a little hard-headed. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Deborah called him and said, look, man, didn't you know the Lord already told you 
that the way we're going to be delivered is not even through me. Uh, even though I'm the head, even though I'm the judge, the deliverance of the people is connected to your obedience. Mm -hmm. She says, now, God has already told you that he's with you, so just go. Now, he said, I want you to go and uh, take 10,000. Now, I want you to follow the imagery and the teaching tonight because we're going, we going a lot of places by his grace. Okay. Uh, he says, she says, shall take 10,000 men with you. All right. And, and you and the 10,000, you lead them. And when you just go to the river, God is going to cause the enemy to simply come to you and he's going to deliver the enemy into your hands. That's the word of the Lord. She said, this is the method. Catch where I'm going. This is the method God wants you to use. He wants you to gather 10,000 men. He wants you to go to the river. And then he wants you to allow them to be delivered into your hand. That's the method. That's the way you're going to be successful. So we got a method. So Barak hears this. And he says, um, yeah, I hear you. But I'm not going to go unless you go. Now, he, he, here's where I got an issue with the text. Um, first of all, Barack, as a man, uh, why am I asking the woman to come fight with me? Mm -hmm. Follow the text all the way out tonight, y'all. You, you just, just stick with me. It's going to be very interesting and lively to you. Um, why would I go to the woman and say, I ain't going to go fight these men Unless you go with me. Mm. Ah, Sister Evans, that kind of threw me off a little bit in the text with good man Barack. I said, Barack, you're kind of janky for that one, Doc. Uh, I'm not really feeling why it is that you said. And so when I began to continue to examine the text, the woman of God, now catch what the, catch what the preacher says. She says, well, um, I need you to understand because I get you a little scary. I understand. Uh, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with you. But I want you to know that the honor you should have received mm is going to be given to a woman. Let's walk through this together. Um, every time there was a battle in Old Testament times, Brother Stukes, uh, it was designed that whoever the chief or the leader, which should have been Barak, of uh, the army was, would basically have, for lack of a better term, a parade thrown for him. Uh, when he comes back victorious, there was normally, uh, there were normally, because uh, they, they accepted this in that time, there were normally women that were presented for him to whoever he wanted to marry. Uh, there was normally a piece of change, some good money that was given to him, uh, and there was an honor that was bestowed upon him by being the one that led the charge in victory. Now, she says, because you're having a problem doing it according to the methodology of God. Mm -hmm. uh, God's still going to perform because that was his promise. But all of the benefits connected to God's performance, you're now forfeiting. Mm -hmm. I want to bring us into that on how we sometimes miss our own blessing. Because whenever we decide that just doing what God said was not enough, mm. and we've got to put our own twist and spin on Go it, ahead. God will bring us out because he's promised to do so, but the honor gets deferred to somebody else. Mm. Now, now, I'm not talking about the honor that's only belonging to God, but I'm talking about the dignity of your testimony. Mm. Okay, Which means you're going to come out when you do it your own way, but you're going to come out looking like you've been in a fight. Mm. You're going to come out with a busted lip, a bloody nose, and your credit going to be bad. Mm. All of it. You, you, that's how you're coming out. You, you coming out, though. You just couldn't put that was funny. You coming out, though. Yeah, you, you, you got a 300 credit score. They don't even have those no more. Uh, you know, you, 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 know uh, you, you, you've been divorced 13 times. Um, you, you've been bankrupt 17 times. Uh, you know, you got a couple of judgments on your record. But the reality is you over it. I got through it, but I got through ugly. Well, Pastor, why would God allow that? Because you chose not to use his methods. Mm. Catch this. There is a prescribed methodology for every situation that we face. And God doesn't want us to question the method. Just do it. I ain't talking about Nike. <laughs> he wants us to just get it done. Well, Pastor... How do I have uh, methodical obedience? I told you first you got to have orderly source, but here's the next thing. God is always going to require us to have faith in what he said. Mm. 
Let me help you. God's methods aren't going to make sense to you. Preacher, why would you say that? Well, because it's the Bible. All I got is the scripture. I wish Kanye was here because that's his drop when I say that. Okay, all I got is the scripture. Uh, Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. The ninth verse says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When I define that word way, and I begin to dig it up in its Hebraic sense, it literally leads me back to a translation of the word method. <laughs> which tells me God's ways, God's methods are not ours. So, so his method That's isn't good, going preacher. to make sense. Here's the thing that should excite us, because neither does faith. Mm. That's good. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me keep going with that. The second verse says, For by it the elders obtain a good report. Yes, mm. 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 Okay, so 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 That's so good. preacher, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you, Demons Black, that the way your faith is set up is that your faith is supposed to be the depiction of what others call crazy. Mm. That's good. When people say, oh, that's crazy, you're supposed to say, yeah, because that's my faith. Because my faith is not going to make sense. If it makes sense, I don't need faith. I can do it myself if it makes sense. If two and two is four, then hey, I don't need no faith for that. It's already proven. I need faith when they tell me two plus two equals 27. Mm. Where Jesus, where the other 23 coming from? It, it's in the method. Oh God! I don't want to hear myself. Okay, so 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 we identify that uh, methodical obedience, Mister Black, is going to require faith in what he said. Now, this is what I love. God is not going to just show us, but He will always tell us. <laughs> he, he, he said, "Now I'm telling you, Barack. All you got to do is go." And when you go, I'm going to put the enemy in your hand. Wow. You ain't even got to do a whole lot of figuring it out. You ain't got to sharpen your knife. You ain't got to go on 33 days of fasting and prayer. You only have to ask me again when you get there what to do. Just go. This is where, this is where I want us to catch you. This is where the twist comes in the text. Uh, when God has prescribed the method, you don't need to pray about it anymore. Mm. That's good. That's good. Just put my weight right there for a minute. Uh, I'm talking to me, you, and everybody else. When God has prescribed the method, mm -hmm. I've already gotten the necessary agreement from the Holy Ghost. That's it. Why am I going to waste time asking him what he's already told me only my faith can produce? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, so when I prescribe the method, don't go back and ask me, God, are you sure this is the way you want it done? I opened the door, didn't I? Yeah, I, I made the provision for you, didn't I? I aligned things up for you. What you asking me for? Just do it. Oh, God, I'm a little scared. Yeah, you're going to be scared because you don't know. You, you're not sure. But he says my methods are proven. That's why the elders obtained a good report because my methods were proven. When I told Abraham, I need you to sacrifice your son Isaac, Abraham didn't ask God if he was sure. He picked Isaac up in the morning. He didn't tell his wife nothing, which was wisdom. He walks to the mountain. He gets to the mountain, tells the guys, y'all stay right here. Me and the lad going to worship, and we're coming right back because God's methods have already been proven. So I'm taking him up. The son is asking me, well, where's the sacrifice? Son, God's going to provide because his methods are already proven. And even when I got to lay you on the altar and tie you up and lift the knife to you like I'm getting ready to drop it on you, his methods are still proven. So we identify that every time God gives a method, it's going to require our faith to walk it out. Barack says, my faith isn't that strong yet, Deborah. Uh, I don't believe God on that level like you do. That's why you're the judge and not me. Mm, let's stay right there for a minute. Uh, she, he, he says, even though I am qualified militarily, mm. I have the skills as a commander and as a fighter that I really should be capable of leading the people. The one quality I don't possess that you do is faith. Mm. I've got the muscle for the job. I just don't have faith for it. 
God help me today. Uh, so, 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 I, I, God says, in order for me to take my people to the place I need them to go, sometimes I'm going to use somebody who it seems like they probably shouldn't be leading. Mm. I, I'm going to use somebody like a Deborah who's got the wisdom and the faith, but not the skill. Mm. Help me today, Jesus. Uh, Deborah's never fought a battle a day in her life, Minister Black, yes, but because she had enough faith, the skilled warrior asked for her to come with him. Wow. <laughs> she, she, you know, Deborah's still getting her nails done. Mm. Y'all will catch that next week. She, she's not thinking about handling a sword because I might chip a nail. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. She says, actually, I'm going to go with you because you're asking me to, but no, I'm not doing anything when we get there. <laughs> Let's be extremely clear. This is what I love, Mr. Lipsko. She says, and I want you to know that the honor mm. you should have gotten Powerful. God's going to give to a woman. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody reading the text without going through the rest of the story would think that the woman God's going to honor would be Deborah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you would think that because she was the one, this ought to get you excited about your family. You would think that because she was the one that sacrificed, she's the one that gets the honor. But God says, I'm not going to give the honor to her, but I'm going to give the honor to somebody that looks like her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, 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 so th th this is why, this is why, you know, you shouldn't be overly concerned about your children when they're out of your presence. Because God says, I've got to honor somebody that looks like you. Oh, God help me today. And, and, and so, and so she, she, she tells Barack this. Barack gets excited because she's going to go with him. Uh, she says, Barack is still going to take some faith. And so as they're, they're doing their thing, they're, they're preparing to go, uh, the story shifts now uh, to another methodical person that used obedience, uh, and that simply being uh, this young lady by the name of J.L., J-A-E-L, okay, we're in Judges chapter 4. Uh, and she's married to a man by the name of Heber. Uh, so, so, so let's go, I begin to look at her life. And I said, well, I'm seeing another orderly source. Uh, I, I'm seeing another orderly story. Well, preacher, how? You know, it, I think she's a murderer. Well, before she became a murderer, she was a wife. Mm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Help, help me tonight, Lord. Okay. Um, so, so, so when I look at the text around the 11th verse, mm. and it says that Heber, okay, her husband, he's taken her away from their kindred. He's taking her away from the comforts of the Kenites, the Seven. people that they, mm -hmm. they blew up, uh, they lived up. He severed himself, mm -hmm. uh, which means there were some jagged edges in how they left. Uh, Christmas wasn't right, so he decided, I'm not going to ask you to leave. We're just going to depart from the table. Y'all catch that as you go home. Uh, because Uncle Junior and them didn't want to act right at the, at the dinner table, uh, and my wife was there. I'm pulling her out of that. Mm -hmm. I don't care what I leave behind. I'm just getting her out of there. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't care who I offended. I have to get her out of there. Mm. Help me today. And, and what I love is the reason that the edges were left jagged yes. is because she didn't fight being ripped away. Right. That's awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> she didn't ask him as he was pulling her out, are you sure we're supposed to do this? Uh, she just got in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when she got in the car, she didn't even talk about how crazy that was. She's like, what are we doing next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. God, help me today. Where are we going to eat now? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so, 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 so I find that I got another orderly source that is eligible to be blessed by God. Go Catch this. She didn't hear any of the conversation between Barack and Deborah. She didn't know the word that had been proclaimed. She didn't even know it was a real battle going on. All she knew was, I'm being a wife. Mm -hmm. Help me tonight, Jesus. And while she's out being a wife, I see another janky husband. Mm -hmm. Heber, who has separated her from her family, has pulled her to himself, has now decided that he's going to give a tip to the enemy. Mm -hmm. Scripture says he goes and he tells Sisera, listen, um, Barak and his crew are on their way to come fight you. Mm. Now, I begin to look at this and I say, now ain't this nothing? Uh, I got a woman of God mm. who's committed to the church. 
committed to the things of the Lord, submitted to a husband who's a double agent. Mm. He working for the church and working for the enemy. Mm. He's the one that tips off the enemy of the people of God that Barak and Deborah are on their way to come fight him. While he's out tipping off <coughs> the enemy, she's still at home being a wife. God, I hope somebody's catching this tonight. Uh, while he's off giving the enemy attention, she's still at home cooking his dinner. Uh -oh. While he's out sabotaging everything she stands for, she's still at home making his bed. Preacher, you got to help me with that. Well, I'm identifying that the more we serve, even when the one we serve doesn't seem worthy to be served, we literally set ourselves up for honor That's the word. that we didn't know was coming our way. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. She's washing his dirty underwear while he's tipping off the enemy. Mm -hmm. She's preparing his meal so that whenever you come home, there's going to be something nice waiting for you, even though you're working against me. Mm. Because I realize that my blessing comes by being your wife. Oh, God from Zion. Oh, God. And so as she's being a wife and he's telling the enemy what's going on, the Bible says that Barak now comes and he sees the word of the Lord being fulfilled. The enemy now comes to him with all 900 of his chariots of iron and all of these things to fight against him. And the Bible says that the people of God, Barak and his 10,000, that came against them were so forceful that before they even started fighting, uh, Sisera goes into a panic. Mm. He jumps ship. He runs away. He leaves his boys there. What kind of leader is this? The leader jumps ship. He said, y'all got it. Mm. Kill them, not me. He runs away. And the Bible says that while he's running, Barak is killing all of his men. He kills absolutely everybody. And Barak, the champion, realizes that in the slaughter, I don't see the man that I was supposed to kill. So the Bible says that while Sisera is running away, he's uh, found the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that when he is walking through the peaceable regions, mm -hmm. Minister Black. Yes, sir. Uh, the woman of God, Sister Tiana, tells him, "Come here, mm -hmm. come, come, come here. Let me, let me, let me, let me hide you. Uh, I, I, I understand. Uh, I've heard that that you in a battle. Let me keep you safe. Come to my tent. I've got dinner that's being prepared for my husband when he gets home. I've got his bed made. But just come into my tent, uh, since you and my husband are friends." Coming to my tent. Mm -hmm. Bob says that, you know, he comes in. Uh, he says, look, I'm on the run. So if anybody asks if there's a man here, Talk us through. you tell them no. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding the context of the time, it was forbidden for a man to walk into the tent of another man's wife. Go ahead, preacher. Okay. Uh, uh, so, 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 not only has he violated the law, mm -hmm. he felt like he was covered because nobody else should do what he did. Mm -hmm. I gotta just say it, but I'll, I'll teach and preach on another day. You better be careful of a leader who says, "Do what I say, uh -oh. not as I do." That's good, preacher. Because the leader, thinking he was protected because he was doing what he shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. Because nobody that follows me will do this because they trust what I say enough not to do what I'm doing. Mm. Help me today. So, so I know none of my people will find me in the strip joint. Mm. Because Welcome. I've told them yes, that's sir. not where they're supposed to be. That's good, preacher. So I'm covered. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I, yeah, I wish I had been married couples because I yes. wanted to say something. Amen. I can't say it tonight. First, they already beat me up for talking too much. Uh, amen. Children. Amen. So marriage retreat coming up, I'm going to get wrong. Okay. But but I, I'm covered. Oh, black yes, sir. While uh, uh, glitter is on me. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's good. Quick. Yeah, good. 
I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm protected because certainly shell isn't going to come here. Yeah, he yeah. Because he's heard my word yes. as his leader. Yes. So certainly he's not going to come here yeah. because he knows this is not what we're supposed to be. He says to, to JL, he says, now look, bring me a little something to drink. Because I'm a little tired, I'm parched. Been on the run. Bring me some water. She looks at him. She says, yeah, well, I know I'm going to set him up, so water ain't going to do what I need. I'm going to go get him a little milk. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to give him something that is synonymous with bedtime. I, I'm going to give him something that, that's going to ease him away. And the Bible says, even though he asked for water, Mm -hmm. And milk is what she bought. Ahead, he drinks it. Mm -hmm. Now, let me let me bring the, rele the, the revelation to that. Well, Pastor, it's just milk. Well, here's the thing. When you're in sin, mm -hmm. you're blind to the enemy's tactics. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh. You, you went to the club asking for a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. And what they bought you was vodka. Go ahead. And because you're weary and in the wrong place, That's true. you find yourself drinking something mm. that you shouldn't be drinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, and because his body wasn't conditioned to receive the poison he was getting, mm -hmm. the Bible says he goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I love, Mr. Black. Yeah. Uh, JL did something that a lot of us, male and female, need to learn how to do. Uh, she learned how to walk softly while he was asleep. Mm. <laughs> Let that marinate for a minute. For all of you ones that get up in the morning, your spouse still in the bed. <laughs> Take a lesson from jail. Mm -hmm. Learn how to walk softly while they sleep. That's good for you. Yes, sir. Don't just be turned on every light. Oh, my God. And you walk like this. You slamming doors. You throwing stuff around. Some of us, we asking questions. <laughs> We're shaking them. <laughs> Are you still asleep? <laughs> you better get a JL anointing tonight. Learn how to walk softly while they sleep. And the Bible says, Black, yes, she walked peaceably and softly to her with a nail in one hand and a hammer in the other. My God, softly. And she says, I don't even realize exactly why I'm getting ready to do what I'm getting ready mm. to do. But I'm being led, connected to the order that's in my life. You, you can catch this in a minute. I, I don't even really get why I'm taking the tent peg mm. and a hammer. Mm. I don't even really know why I'm doing this. But I sense that when I do this, there's some honor coming my way. Mm. The Bible says that while he's sleeping and she's walked softly to him, she takes the tent peg, mm. she takes the hammer, mm. and she drives it through his temples, mm. fastens his head to the ground. My God. And she stands over him. Mm. <laughs> she just went from a wife to a murderer. She stands over him. Not still really understanding why mm -hmm. I had to do what I had to mm -hmm. do. But the Holy Ghost led her outside. She walks outside and she sees Barack. And Barack is kind of frantic. Now this is the one that should have been honored. This is the champion that just killed all these people. He's looking for Caesarea. Yes. He's trying to do all these things. He's frantic. He don't know what's going on. She says, wait, I got a clue. The man you're looking for, I know where he is. Mm. Come, come, come with me. Let, let, let me show you what I've done. Mm. And the Bible says she brings him into the tent. <laughs> he looks at the man laying there on the ground with his temple smashed through. <laughs> with the tent peg showing through his skull. Mm. He said, you did that? She said, well, even though I'm not as strong as you. Mm. Even though I'm not as skilled as you, the Lord let me know there was some dignity I was supposed to get from you. Mm. <laughs> that, that apparently you were afraid to do this. Mm. You, you, you were scared to do this. And because I walked 
methodically. I was in order and I walked softly. I, I gave him what he needed instead of what he wanted. Oh, God. It was easy to kill the adversary when I handled him according to the methods of God. I want you to catch that. It was easy for me to defeat my enemy when I walked according to the methodology of God. He told me to give him milk when he wanted water. So because God told me to give him milk, I didn't ask God why. I just gave him milk. Because God told me to bring him into the tent and cover him with a mantle. Oh, mm, me. Mm, oh God. She, she, she brought him into the tent and honored him when he got there. Mm. She says, because I simply follow the methods God prescribed for me, this is the victory that I find. Now, I began to look and I said, okay, God, now, what, what is it about this, these, uh, you allowing for Barak to take these 10,000 men and you allowing for, for this woman, you know, to, to get the glory uh, and the honor that Barak should have gotten. He's your son again. Tell the people it goes back to her willingness to follow my methods. Mm. She didn't ask me a lot of questions. She just knew what I wanted her to do. When she got the instruction, she didn't pray about it again. Mm. This is for somebody tonight. When she got the answer, she didn't ask, well, God, are you sure this is the way? When she got the answer, she just obeyed me. That's the word. Mm -hmm. So God says our success is connected to our obedience mm -hmm. of his methods. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, pastor, why can't I still drink a little nip when I need one? Why can't I still puff a little Mary Jane when I need the mm -hmm. filler? Go ahead, preacher. Why can't I sip a little uh, Cavazier when, when, when I need it? He says, because that's not my method. Go ahead, but I know, huh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm talking, but I know of people who still hit a little bit of Mary Jane and still, you know, do a little line every now and then mm. and still seem to be prospering. God says the dignity that they should have received, mm. I give to you. Mm. When you do it with my methods. Mm, mm, mm. Oh God from Zion. Powerful. That's why they end up falling. Their ministries crumble. Mm. They got to marry people five times. Because the dignity that I had for them, I'll give to you. Mm -hmm. If you do it with my methods. So I begin to think, okay God, let, let me go back. To Barak, he told him he could do it with 10,000 men following him. So I began to say, well, God, does that mean that in every instance, I can always do it with a lot of people behind? He said, no, son, tell my people that while my ways and methods are stable, they do change connected to your situation. Here we go. So when I look at the very next judge, we just come off Barack and Deborah. They had their time. The very next judge is a man by the name of Gideon. Now, if anybody knows anything about Gideon, Gideon uh, being one of the least of the tribe of Manasseh, uh, him being one of the poorest people in the nation, his family being the least of the poorest tribe, he's now chosen of God to be the next judge. Once he goes through all of his fact-checking and asking God to prove himself and doing all these things that he asked God to do, what we identify is after he's settled in his heart that God has a method for him to use, he looks at the animals of time and he goes back to the history to see what the, preside or the preceding president or the preceding judge oh, yeah. had done in his uh, military triumph. And so he looks at the history of Barak and he says, okay, great. Barak had 10,000 men, and God allowed him to be a success. So I'm going to go ahead and get me 32,000. Rally up a few guys, and uh, we're going to get this thing going, because the methods of God are that I can take a large crew with me. He brings 32,000 before the Lord. The Lord says, no, nah, it's too many of them. Um, if I do it with 32,000 people, they're going to say they did it and not give me glory. I'm in Judges chapter 7. And uh, he says, so 
I want you to just ask those 32,000 men, Evans. He said, I just want you to ask if anybody's scared, raise their hand and go home. The Bible says 22,000 of them raised their hand and went home. Mm -hmm. So you went from 32,000 to 10,000. Now, Dr. Butler, certainly, uh, you know, Gideon was being extra with the 32, but he said, certainly, God, you're going to use the 10,000 for me because that was the same method you used for the man before. Mm -hmm. Help me to teach the back Jesus. Yeah. Certainly, this is it. I don't need to even ask no more questions. I'm matching the number. I know this is the season. I know this is the way. It worked for my neighbor like this, so certainly it's going to work for me. She put her house on the market. It was sold in two days, so certainly I'm going to put mine on the market. It's going to sell in two because that's the method for this community. God looked at him and said, you still got two minutes. And he says, but wait a minute, God. You, you, you used this method for my predecessor. You, you, you used this exact number and gave him victory. Why? Would you shortchange me? God says, you still got too many. He says, here's why I got to use a different method, Sister Delania, because your issue doesn't look like your predecessor's. Mm. Help me today, Jesus. Your, your, your predecessor had an issue with humility. You've got issues with a habit. <laughs> Help me tonight, Jesus. I'm going to show you in the text. He, he says, the, the problem with Barak was there was a lack of humility. In his life, there, there were some areas that he couldn't trust me because his issue was there. I allowed him to flow with 10,000. <laughs> yeah, you, you see it from Sunday preacher. Okay, because his, his issue was there. I allowed him to flow with 10,000. But but your issue has nothing to do with humility, sir. Your issue is you got habits you can't break. He said, so I got to get 10,000 people away from you because if I let you carry a habit in front of 10,000 people. Your fall is going to be worse and theirs too. Goodness. I got to disassociate you from the crowd until I can deliver you. Because if I let you carry a habit leading 10,000 people, I got 10,000 janky people in front of me. Yes, sir. So he says, for the sake of the people that's following you, I got to cut them off. God help me today. He says, take them to the water. And when you get to the water, the same place that Barack's 10,000 received triumph. When you get to the water with the 10,000, he says, just tell everybody to drink it. Mm -hmm. He says, I want you to separate those that get down on their knees and drink. I want you to separate them from those that drink the water by lapping or cupping it up in their hands like a dog. Mm -hmm. He says, after which they do this, he identifies 300 of them that were still attentive and alert when they were drinking the water. The other 9,700 got down on their knees and put their face in the water and just drank it in that capacity. God says, I can't use them because they let their needs supersede what I want. Mm. I can't God. use them because they'll let their thirst cause them to be distracted. I can't use them because they'll put their own needs above that which I need from them. But I'll use that 300 that could still keep their head up while they were satisfying their needs. Oh, God. I'll use the 300 that still had their eyes on you for the command while they thought they were on break. I'll use the 300 whose feet will go numb with you. That, next word. Uh, that won't complain. About their shoes being too tight. That, that won't complain about how long they got to be in church. I'll use the 300. Go ahead, preacher. That'll put what I want mm -hmm. above what they feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible says with that See. methodology. Mm -hmm. God told him, now you take them 300 people. Split them up in groups of hundreds. Mm -hmm. All they got to do is every leader of the hundred look at you and do what you do. And I'm going to show you that by you, Gideon, I'm going to allow you to use methods that I'm going to give that's going to cause your habit to be destroyed. Here's where I'm getting that from. What I've identified is that Barak, his enemy, were the Canaanites. The word Canaan, when you do the definition, the etymology of the word, you identify that that word yields uh, that which is low-lying and that which humbles and subdues. Okay? That which is low-lying, Canaan, and that which humbles and subdues. Which means that Barak's issue was one that he needed to find humility. 
And because he needed to identify humility, sometimes God brings crowds before you so that you can be humbled in front of large numbers to realize you can't contend with God. Wow. So the dignity he should have given to Barak in the eyes of the 10,000 has now turned into scorn. That now he goes back to these men who have fought who's got blood on their clothes, who's got hands that are tired, he goes back to them with clean vestments and no blood on him oh because a woman did what he should have done. God had to humble him. So he kept the 10,000 so he could be humbled enough to know that I need God to do what I got to do. The issue that Gideon had was an issue with the Midianites. When I look up the word Midianite, do the etymology on that, I identify that Midian in fact, is the place of habits. Mm. It's the place of addiction. Mm. Uh -huh. So God says, if my leaders are still struggling with habits and addictions, Go I've got to keep their exposure low because I don't want them to lose or negatively <laughs> affect those that may follow. He said, I needed 300 alert people who would be willing to pray for their leader while still serving under him. Mm -hmm. Help me today. I needed 300 that weren't going to be caught up in the habit that the leader had. This is good, preacher. But could support to deliver him out of. Mm -hmm. so, so if you go back to, to what I said in the very beginning, humbly, you really should be thankful for your leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that, that, that I need you to pray, but you don't have to be concerned about addictions and habits. Mm -hmm. We'll catch that next week. We're, we're on the ride home. The, the light bulb will come on. Oh, I get it, Pastor. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So, 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 so the reality is God used a different method yes, because it was a different issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can't compare my method with your method mm -hmm. because my issue isn't your issue. Go ahead. God might need to use 10,000 for me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but only 300 for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. He says, hence and help them understand that all they, they're supposed to do is obey the method I've assigned for them. Mm -hmm. So what I begin to understand is that what God looks for, Minister Black, yes, sir. are those of us who are willing to follow his methods, even when his methods don't match our human reasoning. Mm. Okay, so all I got is the Bible. There, there's a story in, in, in Matthew chapter 8. <laughs> Minister Black used to really like this story. It was two stories Minister Black really liked. He liked the story in Matthew chapter 8, and he liked the story in Daniel chapter 3 uh, with the Hebrew boys. Those were like his drops back in the day. Uh, God has expanded him by his grace, uh, so he's beyond those two now. But but he used to love this particular story right here, uh, Deaconess Evans. He used to love the story about the centurion man um, in, in, in Matthew chapter 8. Uh, and this man, uh, he comes to Jesus on behalf of his son. And uh, he says to Jesus, look, uh, I got a son that's laying in the house. He's sick almost to death. Uh, can you just speak the word over his life? And I know he'll be healed. And Jesus says, well, I'll come to your house. I'll come to your house and lay hands on him. Uh, and the man of God says, no, you, you don't need to do all that. Uh, just speak the word because yes, I'm a man in authority, but I'm under authority. Yes, sir. <laughs> he says, I, I've got people under me that when I tell them to do a thing, they do it. Uh, that when I tell them to come here, they just come here. When I tell them to leave, they just leave. They don't question me. So I understand how methods and authority works. Yes, sir. And I know enough about the God in you, Jesus, that even though it doesn't make sense to the rest of those around me that are telling you, Jesus, you don't need to come to my house, <laughs> uh, you know, while everybody's begging for Jesus to come to their house, he actually tells Jesus, I don't need you to come to my house. Just speak the word. Because I understand that the word you're going to speak here has the same power if you were to do it there. Mm -hmm. Let me wow. come pick you all the way up. Wow. So, so, so that means even if I can't make it to the altar, mm. if I'm on my hospital bed, mm -hmm. the same power, same power. that will touch me at the altar mm. will touch me at CMC Man. Go ahead. Go ahead. The same power. All it takes is me agreeing with the method that God is using. Same power. Preacher, you said that we can't let the method, 
you know, our, our human reasoning, you know, uh, fight with the method. Yes, you know, we talk a lot about Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, where he as a human is saying to God, the method you're choosing for me, I don't really like. You know, I don't necessarily want to have to go on the cross. It's not that I'm afraid to die. I'm afraid about being separated from you. I've never felt that before. That's I've never good. experienced that. So the method you're telling me to use, I don't really agree with. He says, but I don't want the humanity of me to mess up the divinity of me. So forget what human reasoning says. Just let your will be done. You're going to have those moments. That's good, preacher. Where you're going to have to really tell yourself, mm -hmm. I can't let human reasoning mess up what God has divinely planned for my life. But why does it seem like it's so difficult? It's going to be difficult. That's where faith comes in. That if this is the prescribed method, you told me this is going to be mine. Now that you've told me how it's going to get here, makes me no difference anymore. I'm just going to follow you. I'm not going to allow my reasoning to tell your methods no. That's where a lot of us fall. Can we let our reasoning tell God's methods no? God it didn't work like that for my cousin, so that ain't how you flow with me. God says, no, I got a method. I've got a way. And if you would submit to what I have for you, I'll give you the honor that I was supposed to give to them. Oh, God. So, 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 so a, as I hasten to my close here, um, there, 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 there's another scripture that, that God gave me. Um, oh, God, from Zion. Um, oh, Lord. Uh, okay. Well, let, let me just do this one. Then I, I'll get out your way. Oh, Lord. I got so many other areas I wanted to go. Okay. Um, there's, there's a scripture in, in, in Romans uh, chapter 11, uh, the 33rd verse. Romans 11, 33. I says, oh, uh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Okay, again, that's Romans 11, 33. It says, oh, the depth uh, of the, both of the, uh, of the riches, both of the wisdom and of the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The reality is this. When God will allow us into the space of his methodology, mm -hmm. what he's looking for is for us not to rationalize what he's saying, but for us to trust that his wisdom and his knowledge is beyond what we can conceive. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit, Sister Kanisha talked a little bit on Sunday, um, you know, about doing it God's way. And she talked about how there's a difference in knowledge and wisdom. And she's, again, right on it. That again, we, we've noted that knowledge is the know-how and wisdom is the how-to. So God says, this is the thing. When, when I release my method upon your life, meaning I'm giving you the way in which I'm going to do it. He says, don't waste your time trying to figure out how to and how I will do what I do. Wow. Don't, 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 don't waste your time because it's unsearchable. Yet the answer cannot be found. Mm. Which means the answer is actually revealed when we yield. To his method. I get the answer. Because I did what he said. Not that I knew what he was doing. Because you'll never find out. Mm -hmm. But I did sister Coop what he said. So if he tells me. I'm supposed to pay off a bill. I'm going to pay off a bill. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily understand why I got to pay it off right now. Mm -hmm. I can pay it off three weeks from now. Yeah. I don't understand why I got necessarily to do this today. But if this is the methodology. I'm not going to waste my time with the how or the why. I'm going to just trust your method is working. Yeah. And then when I can show him that I'm willing to follow his method, that's where the honor comes. That's where I come out with the testimony. And instead of me being beaten bloody, I come out with my hands raised. I come out with a smile on my face. I still got a story about what I went through. But I look nothing like what it was that I did. Yes, sir. God help me today. Uh, I, you know, I might have had to come out, yes, and I came out having to eat, uh, not eat, and call it a fast just because I was broke. Mm. You that next week. But, but, but the reality ahead, is, preacher. when I come out, I'm not going to look like I was losing a lot of weight. Mm. God help me today. 
I'm going to come out just like black fairy people again, the Hebrew boys. Yes, sir. That after 10 days of no yes, meat, yes, the sir. Bible says their skin was healthy. Mm. Their faces were fuller. Mm. It looked like they had been eating steaks. Mm. <laughs> because they did it according to the methods of God. Mm. Preacher, what are you trying to tell me? We got to follow God's method. It's his way. And when I follow his method for me, I don't have to try to explain to somebody else why I'm doing what I'm doing. I ain't got to try to find agreement from nobody else because I got the agreement I needed from the Lord that I served when he told me this was the way I was supposed to do it. That's why you can't let everybody into your stuff. Let me give you this before I get out of here. You can't let everybody into your plan. Folks got loose lips. And they sink ships. And because of that, the dignity you should have got got to be given to somebody else. Because you let somebody else into your habit. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. It, oh, God. They weren't even supposed to be there. They, 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 they were supposed to be gone. They, they should have been in the 9700 that left. Mm. But because I, you know, that's my homeboy over there. Uh -oh. My partner, he knew me when. Yeah, but he don't know you now. Oh. Hey. Yeah. That? So let him stay in the wind. Hey. Mm. Catch that. Yes, the sir. wind. Any one you want to use. The W-E-N, the W-I-N-D, whatever you want to use, let them stay in that. <laughs> so we got to realize that God is looking for methodical obedience. Not just our yes, but he's looking for our yes to his way. Not just the will do it, but the will do it his way. When I do it his way, there's a victory that's promised to me and an honor that's due me. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus all tonight. Thank you, Pastor Hinton. And thank you all for viewing and sharing this video. Stay tuned and in tune for the next awesome move of God.